A very pleasant afternoon to each one who have joined with us for uh, this uh, first uh, session on um, translational research overview. I would like to thank the organizing team, Mr. Tangaraj, Dr. Radhika, uh, Dr. Linu and her team, and uh, also the Dean, Dr. Judith, Associate Dean, and all the other faculty members who had been working uh, towards this lecture series. Uh, Dr. Prachi Kaul, I thank you for considering the College of Nursing Manipal for uh, two programs to organize this lecture series. Today, I will talk with you on translational research. Just an overview uh, because uh, uh, you have seen that details of the translational research will be uh, explained in the uh, forthcoming sessions by experts like uh, Dr. Manju Chugani, Dr. Mahadev, Dr. Praveen, and Dr. Sandhya Gupta. So before you listen to them, I thought it would be nice to have a little brainstorming on uh, translational research. That's what I'm going to do with you today. And I have no actual or potential conflict of interest in this short session, which I'll be dealing with you. First, I would like to start with a quote given by uh, Louis Pasteur. He says, there are no two sciences. There is science and its application. And these two are linked as the fruit is to the tree. We cannot separate them. So the science need to be applied. We say that research uh, improves the scientific knowledge. And knowledge alone is not sufficient. That knowledge has to be taken into practice. Today, I will uh, have a session with you all on a brief introduction in general about research, then translation and translational research, definitions of translational research, and uh, the translational research in nursing, and a little bit on the history of developing translational research as a concept into the discipline of research. Models of translational research, I will just mention because someone else will be talking in detail. And barriers and enablers to translational research, specific ethical concerns and conclusion. This introduction is in general, as all of us know, for any profession to grow and develop, there should be generation of new knowledge. And that happens when the professional members start doing research and adding up new information and no, new knowledge into the practice. And health science practices can improve with evidences from research. This is very important in health sciences. If we can look around, we see that the demographics of disease pattern itself has changed. The structure of the society has changed and new emerging diseases are there unless ongoing research and generation of new information into the health science, the practices cannot be updated. And basic research is done usually to increase knowledge through a systematic inquiry of the phenomenon or subject. And the findings of the uh, basic research cannot remain in vacuum. As of now, I feel that having seen the nursing profession and uh, healthcare professions for the past three decades in the practice and the progress, I feel that a lot of application has happened. But still, a number of research after doing the research and the uh, publication, it remains as an article or as a document in the library. That should not happen. It has to be taken to the society as the practice uh, in the field. Uh, according to David Satcher, who was the uh, former US Surgeon General, the gap between what we know and what we do in public health is lethal. That's exactly what I was telling. We have a lot of knowledge. We do a lot of knowledge generation. But the application of that for improving the public health is not as much as expected, so it is lethal. Uh, coming to translation, the importance of research application. As I mentioned in my previous slide, science and application of science is uh, closely linked or associated. In health sciences, because most of us who are attending are healthcare professionals and a good number are from the nursing profession, in health sciences, research must be applicable to the real world settings. 
even if a laboratory strict controlled laboratory research is done also it has to be related to the real world settings because unlike many of the other professions in health sciences profession be it medicine uh, dentistry nursing public health allied health or uh, any of these professions we deal with human beings in the real world so our research must be applicable to real world settings and it must advance the capacity of science and also it should address complex healthcare challenges the challenges which was there 30 years ago uh, when i started nursing is not what is the challenge now challenges have become more complex so to deal with the complex challenges we need to do the research and it must be applicable for the people with whom we work the enhanced importance given for application of research has led to the development of the concept translation and translational research the main reason behind the development of translation and translational research is the requirement of application of new findings which are scientific which are generated through research translation we will see what do we understand by translation the uh, it is a process translation is a process of advancement of scientific knowledge from bench to bedside that is from laboratory or the uh, research setting to the bedside that is to the people it is a process of turning scientific observations which are gained through the research study to interventions which will improve the health of individuals and the public the translation of the diagnostics the newer diagnostic technologies and the therapeutic findings need to be taken to nursing or medical procedures and finally leading to behavioral changes behavioral changes in the healthcare professionals and also uh, the recipients of healthcare services now what is translational research this is an evolving concept across many disciplines and it focuses on the need for practical applications of research we had an international conference about uh, one month and few days back at manipal and i was given the topic to talk on translational research in fact i was not that much into translational research but going through the literature reading more and more now i think i have fallen in love with that and i really appreciate the organizing team that from that one topic they have taken up a lecture series which will make that area more clear for the healthcare professionals and uh, translational research focus on the need for practical applications of research uh, the word meaning itself is very clear that translating research translating for what translating for practice instead of being in black and white in the uh, articles or in the dissertation which is prepared it has to be translated into the bedside that is on the floor and translational research seeks to produce more meaningful and applicable results that directly benefit human health and the goal of translational research is more basic science discoveries quickly and efficiently into practice these two words are very important the discoveries must be uh, taken to practice quickly and efficiently instead of keeping it as an information you know usually uh, by the time one research is over the researchers are exhausted so translating it into practice taking it to bedside then common tendency is to postpone that should not happen it has to be done quickly and efficiently so uh, a definition on translational research the traditional very simple definition is uh, it refers to bench to bedside paradigm that is the findings from the research bench from the settings or the laboratory or the society these are taken into the clinical environment for further testing and application 
by doing a research once and getting the findings we cannot say that it is 100% applicable and generalizable repeated uh, research on the same areas are required before we confidently declare that these are the knowledge that can be taken safely for practice and application coming to a more complete definition which was given by Ruth Molnard in 2011. Translating research findings into pra practice, it goes a little bit more beyond the bench to bedside definition. Where does it move to? It uh, goes to improving individuals' quality of health by improving access to and by reorganizing and coordinating systems of care and ultimately changing behaviors in the community of both healthcare providers and recipients and finally driving for a policy change to bring about change in practice. So translational research doesn't stop with the clinical application. It moves on to a larger community or public health application and a policy change uh, instituted by the healthcare ministry of the place where we are doing it. So a complete definition is like improving individuals quality of health by improving access to healthcare services, reorganizing and coordinating systems of care and ultimately changing the behaviors. You know in education we always learn that qualifications and degrees doesn't matter and a truly educated person means there is a change in behavior. It's the same. The research which is brought about knowledge, it has to be translated in such a way that it is accepted and the behavior of the healthcare providers and the recipients uh, goes through a change. And finally, driving the policy to support these changes. That's about translational research. So, translational research as a newer concept in the field of research encourages and promotes multidisciplinary collaboration among professionals from basic and clinical sciences. Multidisciplinary collaboration in research is very important, especially in health sciences. Each profession is equally important in improving the care services of the recipients under our care. So it must be a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary or interprofessional research including the basic science researchers and the clinical researchers and it incorporates the desires of general public through communities being engaged to determine their needs for health innovation because finally unless there is a behavior change brought in among the public through their participation, a change cannot be a permanent change. So it, to be acceptable, then we need to have the general public included into the research process. That's including them to tell us what is it that they require, what are their problems and what will be the best for them. Take from that grassroots level, uh, plan for the research and then find solutions for their problems and then take it back to the public, it will be more acceptable. And the translational research identifies and supports the adoption of the best nursing, medical or any healthcare practices. Coming to translational research in nursing, translation has been part of nursing research since its inception. Uh, as a practicing profession, nursing never believed in generating knowledge and keeping it under lock. So from the beginning and from the history of nursing, we can find that our profession had been insisting on bringing about changes for the better individualized care for the recipients of our care services. The only thing is that the concepts or the wordings kept on changing. Uh, I have put uh, four uh, decades what happened in our profession. The discipline of nursing had shifted its language of translational research. 
initially in 70s research translation that is taking research finding to practice was there then the terminology changed us in 1980s as research utilization then the latest now everybody talk about evidence based practice a more decent a more complex and more complete uh, uh, terminology for bringing or improving the practice based on evidence it is very clear that evidence is generated through research and in 2000s we have gone to use the term translational research so this had been part of us and we are refining on that so that you know our uh, practices will be on more sound and safe uh, knowledge so although uh, translation has been discussed for more than 30 years recently it has become a major focus in nursing and health science research uh, coming to a, a newer definition given by stanford center for translational nursing science in 2018 translational research in nursing in short known as translational nursing ensure alignment of current evidence and clinical practice the current evidence being taken to the present practice so aligning the current evidence and clinical practice by supporting a culture of inquiry where nurses continually examine their practice there was a time most of the research which was going on in nursing profession was academic research and uh, now the, um, the there is a Uh, acceptable and most welcome uh, change in the focus areas of nurse, uh, research in nursing that's more of research in clinical because we are more and more emphasizing understanding believing and focusing on care as the core of our profession so to improve the core which is the care we need to have a culture of inquiry where we can continually examine our practice and identify the opportunities where a review of the evidence would improve clinical outcomes not depending on the traditional practices traditional practices combined with the critical inquiry research and improving the practices that is what the translational research is in nursing so translational research in nursing transforms individual scientific research findings to new clinical management finally the research whatever is done should reach the clinical side for the practicing nurses to improve the clinical nursing services for the recipients of care so for new clinical management new nursing interventions and new care process or pathways that is what is done by the translational research transforming the clinical management transforming the nursing interventions and transforming the care processes or pathways the goals of our research in translation is improve patient care i just now mentioned to you that whatever happens whichever situation we are in whichever qualification you have got whichever advanced nursing learning we have got also it all should reach to improve the patient care services unless the patient care services are improved our profession cannot grow and uh, another goal is to enhance the family and community health we believe that the person who comes to the hospital is a member of the family family also goes through lots of problems when an individual member becomes unwell and the family is from the community so in the profession of nursing we give individualized care for the individual person their family and the community also at large and another goal is to introduce behavioral changes behavioral changes i have mentioned that behavioral changes not only in the recipients of care services we always have got a myth or a um, or a false uh, um, idea that you know once we complete our course we know everything the recipients of our services should listen to us gone are those days we have to update ourselves we we need to update 
we need to change our behavior then only we can expect to bring about some behavioral changes in the recipients of our services so we need to update ourselves by going through the latest literature from the research evidences and bring changes among ourselves and our recipients of services then influence or make policy changes so that it will become acceptable and it will reach all the population and the last goal is to ensure sustainable healthcare services not for one year or one month the researcher is around so we will bring about a little change no the change which we bring about should be sustainable that is why sound research is essential and our research is now being accepted our research by the nursing professionals are considered as very important in the clinical settings because our research is practical our research is effective and cost effective also therefore it is considered as a critical pathway i was telling the other time also that you know the funding agencies have started coming forward to encourage nurses to do research the reasons are these because the nurses deal with the patients at the bedside they know the practical concerns of our patients or our customers and so we take up research which are practical effective and cost effective and our research help the organizations to reduce hospital errors and improve patient care outcomes that is why nursing research is now widely accepted as a critical pathway for improving the outcome of patient care services in the clinical settings translating nursing research is essential for what for safe transparent effective and efficient healthcare and meeting the expectations of patients families and community the whole world has accepted this and it was an opportunity for nurses to prove that our research is essential for the whole world to be safe and effective and efficient in healthcare services with the uh, pandemic of uh, covid-19 through which the entire globe is going through since 2 years so uh, we are uh, given the recognition that we are an important group of members in the healthcare profession to improve and to sustain the healthcare status of the nation and the globe a little bit about the history maybe of uh, translation research it was in 2003 uh, dr radhika during her uh, introduction and during the inaugural session has mentioned also about uh, dr elia saroni who was the director of national institutes of health uh, from the during the period 2000 to 2008 Uh, it was actually his thoughts which has ignited the uh, thoughts on uh, translation research and its importance he announced a plan to transform the research capabilities and improve the translation of research into healthcare practice he believed that the healthcare practice to improve in any nation there should be common guidelines there should be common understanding among the researchers uh, i am sure that all of you who are listening you and you know that the way or the depth of knowledge on research methodology statistics these are all different at different uh, healthcare professionals in any nation so unless we have a common understanding with the goal of improving the healthcare services nation cannot improve that is what he thought so he established something called ctscs that is clinical translational science centers across the country and these were funded by the government and common guidelines were given and the intention of these clinical translational science centers were for providing integrated intellectual and physical resources for the conduct of original research and for its translation that is the leadership in the country had taken interest to make sure that resources are provided for researchers and they are given opportunities to do original research and the findings are 
translated for the best care services for the public for this he uh, proposed three roadmaps with three themes that is new pathways to discovery research teams of the future not in isolation not even the basic interdisciplinary and uh, reengineering the clinical research expertise what did he say in new pathways to discovery he said the health science research must go and adopt bioinformatics and nanomedicine biological pathways these are all, all essential to give individual specific targets for management so he said any nation must have new pathways to discovery for this the research must be done in bioinformatics nanomedicine and biological pathways and the teams of the future research groups must be interdisciplinary public private partnerships must be there because we know utilization of resources availability of resources availability of expertise these are spread across public and private uh, entrepreneurs so the partnerships are essential and innovative research work must start not some simply you know i will do a research for the sake of getting an additional qualification on getting a promotion or making a person permanent in a job position not that the research work must be innovative because what is the reason i hope all of you still remember that the reason is that in healthcare profession we are dealing with human life no technology can replace a life which is lost so we need to have innovative research to sustain uh, the human life and to provide the most safe or the safest care services and reengineering the clinical research enterprise clinical research networks not only national or state or the local one networks should go across the globe sharing the expertise and then patient reported outcomes we are talking so much these days about evidence based practice this uh, they focus in evidence based practice that the patient reported outcomes must be given importance because they know what they go through and what are their problems that's why for any public health improvement public participation is essential so patient reporting the outcomes of management is essential and clinical research training as uh, professor uh, elia saroni has mentioned every healthcare professional must be given training in the clinical research models of translational research um, uh, this will be taken in depth uh, by uh, dr mahadev rao uh, literature gives a number of models the uh, most commonly used ones which i have come to know are the t spectrum which is usually known as translational spectrum which moves from t0 to t4 and another model is iterative translational model and the third is biomedical translation research continuum i'm sure dr mahadev will be elaborating on these areas now a very common question like any of the um, academic research which students do they ask can all research be published all masters dissertation be published like that we may have a question that can all research evidence be translated the response is no everything cannot be translated it has to be given a very sound base when we think about or when we plan the research the design applicability and strength of the research should be assessed see the design must be very strong uh, considering the research problem in our hand and the applicability of the research findings and strength of the research before we decide whether it can be translated and the evidence for translation is determined to be relevant and sound through knowledge distillation so you have heard something called knowledge distillation acceptance of the research findings whether it is sound and safe and relevant it is decided through knowledge distillation doing one research getting the findings of that let us not jump into making changes in our practice it may land up to be unsafe so 
knowledge distillation is essential you are, i am sure all of us have heard about systematic reviews and uh, uh, systematic review ebp protocols and guidelines being developed after the systematic review so knowledge distillation is the synthesis of findings from the most rigorous research available the most rigorous that means the strong design the strong design means not only the research approach and the research design the statistical methods used the interventions used and the whole process of research which was undertaken so uh, it should be most rigorous research available on a specific topic and synthesizing that through the findings through systematic reviews and guidelines the synthesis can be presented as practice guidelines or fact sheets for clinical use for bringing about changes so i want to make it very clear that every single and simple research which we do let us not jump into translating that into practice number of rigorous research on the same area or similar topic and those findings must be synthesized through systematic reviews and the practice guidelines must be generated and it must be acceptable by policy policy i don't mean that first to start with the national policies it can be the institutional policies also so to start with at the local level policy changes at the institutional level and once the research moves in do the next stage that is public health outcome research and then only we can expect the national uh, policy change the lapse between the publication of evidence and its implementation into practice is called evidence practice gap and this must be bridged in translation so one of the aims of translational research is to bridge the gap between evidence and practice uh, moving quickly into barriers to translation i'm not touching into the areas which the other experts are going to talk since this is only an overview there can be a number of barriers like increasing volume of research evidence now plenty of research is available number of databases are there but the researchers may have limited access to new evidence and also researchers may have lack of skill to appraise the quality of evidence Uh, through the database use and also reviewing the rigorous research findings which are available and lack of capacity to apply evidence evidences may be found but uh, uh, inadequacy in the capacity to bring in evidence may be because of the institutional restrictions or regulations or the environment in which we practice and competing priorities in healthcare challenging situations the priorities given by the organization and the country and some organizational and individual factors also can act as barriers the clinician behavior that's why it's very important that you know we should have a uh, interprofessional team when we start with the rigorous research with the aim of bringing about changes in behavior and bringing the uh, knowledge translation to practice difficulties in developing evidence based guidelines lack of continuing education and supportive organizational structure sometimes some of the organizations are very happy with how they are not looking more into the growth or the future uh, in those situations it becomes difficult to translate the research findings lack of individual motivation opportunities are there individuals also are very happy static somehow i want to do as i am doing and uh, then when my services are over i finish it no motivation difficulty in changing human behavior we all know that the most difficult task is, is to get the human beings to change our behavior but we have to be happy there are some enablers also for translation considering the translation from initial study design stage itself not after completing the study we should have clearly set goal that after the study how are we going to translate that has to be built into the design i mentioned in one of the slides during the talk that you know get the public to be participating because they know so their participation also as member of the research team that will help uh, in taking or translating it into 
the population. Then support from senior clinicians, uh, convincing them during the study design process itself, how is it going to benefit? And we are going to do this study, we will do the systematic review, we will develop the practice guideline and we will change it. Ongoing monitoring to refine, redesign the and uh, to ensure impact. During the process, if we find that there is something which need to be refined or if our design has to be modified, that need to be done. Then including end users throughout the research process, as I mentioned, end users are the recipients. So they need to be included. Establishing stakeholder group to develop and implement translation. Uh, moving to the last part, ethical concern. The uh, usual uh, ethics or ethical concerns in any research remains and that has to be continued along with that or in addition. The position paper on interventional clinical trials uh, results, uh, WHO has given out that uh, it is unethical to conduct human research without publication and dissemination. Because if we conduct research on human beings following all the ethical guidelines, but still if we do not publish it and if we do not disseminate it people to cut, for people to come to know, it becomes an unethical practice because the same thing may be tried upon another group of people. It is, un, it is not required and it becomes unethical. Withholding results may subject people to unnecessary risk. So those of you who are listening to this session, if you have done a research and if you think that's going to be useful for the recipients of healthcare services, make sure you publish it and you disseminate it. Results to be submitted for publication within 12 months of your study completion. We should not get exhausted after the study. Uh, hold on and tell that tiredness you wait. Uh, let me publish it. After that, we'll take a little rest. Okay. In conclusion, I would like to tell that strong evidence must be translated into practice. There should not be an evidence practice gap. It must be translated into practice. And translation should be considered in research design, including the end users and an evaluation of the research implementation. Translating best research evidence can make for a more transparent and sustainable health service. And being a nurse, I want, I am not. Uh, saying that other healthcare professions are not important, all of us are equally important, but being a nurse, I want to tell that the role of nurses are central and critical in bringing about care and practice changes in the clinical setting. Because the nurses spend maximum time, they get more time to understand the individual patient's needs and problems. The translation of evidence can bring Cultural, behavioral and practice change, reducing the research practice gap. Through the translation of evidence, patient safety and care responses can be recalibrated to optimize outcomes for patient and staff, both patient safety and care outcomes. The success of research implementation in healthcare depends on healthcare team or consumer behavior change. Behavior change in both healthcare team and the consumers of people. So knowing is not enough. We know so much, it doesn't matter. It is uh, of no use unless we apply it. Willing is not enough, we must do it. I am willing to do if somebody facilitates. No, we should explore and find possibilities to apply the knowledge and the evidence which we have generated. With the clinical expertise that nurses have, nurse scientists are well